afternoon YouTube. I got a few red worms left over and got a couple of night crawlers. Well, two cubs actually. So I'm gonna try to catch some bait and then throw the cat rods out because this water's up a little bit. So I'm gonna try to keep the gap into a minimum in this video because you know it's kind of annoying to me. So anyway, I'm gonna get baited up and get some lines out. You know why I like this spot? Every single time I come here, the spots for my rod holders never change. That's good enough. We using them nuclear worms, them red worms. I ain't red, them red worms is green. Actually, since we don't have a lot of wind, I'm gonna leave my line a little bit tighter this time. And I got my tripod with me. I need to, I need to glue this piece right here, like to like this part, because it separates very easily. I got something. It ain't gonna be something for long. I mean, there's a big old turtle right there that I'll probably have an issue with. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yellow bass. Yellow bass that's seasoned with pollen. You know what? You're going in the cooler as bait i would throw that back out but i would like to be able to you know control things for a minute i probably just crossed that other line too Oh crap, something, <laughs> I thought I was tangled up in that line, which I probably am here in just a second. But this rod just doubled over. I was like, nope, that ain't my line. Got a good yellow bass. I've got the one in the cooler, so I'll let this one go back. Oh, I am very sorry because that landed right on a rock. I'll put you in the cooler and you'll just be bait the next time. It won't be fresh bait, but you'll be bait. Yep. Itty bitty yellow, little yellow bass. Oh, John boy, been wanting some yellow bass to catch. Or been wanting to get into some yellow bass. And I telling him where they at. But he has to go for them old bronze backs. Which I honestly can't blame him. Smallmouth are awesome. And since I've got enough bait to last me longer, long enough to 
finish off this day, which should be a couple of hours. Ooh, don't go sliding around. I got enough mess in here as it is. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the catfish rod. No, we got one cat right out. Might as well check this and see if they've robbed the worm off of it. I probably need to get down here. And I want to loosen that spool tensioner a hair. And while we wait, we'll just have us a seat. Now we got something on here. And I bet it's a turtle. Uh, whatever it is, it's serious. Uh, that's not a turtle. If it is, it's a freaking monster. And I hope my battery don't die. Nope, that is a big old catfish. A big one too. Um, hopefully I can get down here without falling. Yeah, that's a big old catfish. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That is a big old catfish.
I got you now. Alright, y'all. I got another hammer of a catfish out of this creek. That is a big one. Let's get a weight on. Twenty-seven, twenty-seven, twelve. All right, let's get a picture real quick and release it. Who? That was a nice one. Uh, twenty-seven, twelve. Um, caught him on a bluegill side. Not a real big piece either. I mean, it was maybe two inches by an inch cut. Want to get another one? put on there real quick and get her back out there that was fun let's do it again y'all see that I'm trying to send a picture of that catfish to old creek fishing adventures pretty sure it gets on his nerves a little bit but you know It's all in good fun. He's done it to me plenty of times with some big small mouth and large mouth. All right, well, I decided to call it quits. Um, bite just kind of died off, but real quick, I wanted to go over the rod that I caught that catfish on, types of hooks, and reason why I choose certain brands of hooks over others. Now, like the one that I found, when you're catfishing, you really want a a hook with a wide gap, like between the hook point and the shank. Like this one that I found, this is a one or two aught cigar or not cigar, um, eagle claw circle hook. You can get these at Walmart. They're pretty cheap. They're they're good hooks for the money, but as you can tell, there is a very small gap between the hook point and the shank. And while you can catch bigger catfish on these, the reason you want a circle hook or you know, J hook or whatever with a bigger hook gap is you've got to think about the thickness of the jawbone or the jaw itself of a catfish. If that hook shank or hook point or gap isn't big enough to get around, you know, around the bone of a catfish's mouth, you're not going to have nearly as good of a chance of hooking up with it. And I will gladly take a smaller size circle hook with a wider gap all day, every day, over a bigger hook with a smaller gap. Reason being, like I just said, that gap is gonna be, or make it a lot easier to get around the jawbone of a catfish. The one that I caught that one on, which is a little bit small, but it worked, is a Whisker Seeker triple threat circle hook four aught and it's got a little bit bigger gap between the hook point and shank and it enabled me to get that hook around the jawbone of that catfish um gamakatsu makes some good hooks this one here is another whisker seeker triple threat and you can see in a six aught that is how wide that gap is smaller hooks you can use bigger baits and still be able to get around the jawbone of that catfish um let's see here this one is an eight aught triple threat heavier wire hook same as the other ones bigger hook gap i really 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 like whisker seeker triple threat circle hooks um for that reason they're strong hooks they got a big hook gap and even on the smaller ones you can use bigger baits and you know still have plenty of hook exposed and a big enough hook gap to get around that jawbone. Um, Team Catfish makes really good circle hooks. The double action circle hooks 
they have a huge gap. Their strong hooks are very worth the money. You can get them at Walmart or Team Catfish website. I'll try to leave a link in the description to all this. But, yeah, like I said, a wide gap circle hook is always better, in my opinion, for that reason. Now, this rod is a whisker seeker. Like I've had to tape up the handle because this composite handle does crack and peel a little bit. But it's a whisker seeker, triple threat, or not triple threat, whisker seeker, Chad Ferguson edition, GFX rod. It's a two piece rod, so you can break it down. You can get them in one piece. Um, the reel is a Okuma Classic CLX 200 LA. It holds plenty of 30 pound mono. You could even put 40 on there if you wanted to, or a ton of, you know, heavy braid, like 80 pound, 100 pound even. Um, good loud drag clicker, good smooth drag. Um, just good all around setup. Now, I personally wouldn't use this reel for something huge like big, big river fishing like Mississippi or going for sturgeon or spoonbill, you know, snagging, stuff like that. Mostly because of the line capacity, but you also have to think about the internals. You know, you want a reel that's capable of holding up to the stress that, you know, big catfish can put on it. I know this all too well because I, one of the biggest flatheads I've ever caught, I caught on a bass reel while crappie fishing. That reel never worked again. It free spooled no matter what you did. But anyway, I will leave a link in the description to Whisker Seekers website so you can check out these rods. They've got um, the Catfish and Carp Editions, which are a lighter action, you know, something you could bass fish with even. Um, GFX rods from medium all the way up to heavy action. Then they have the same rods, but with an aluminum reel seat instead of this plastic one, which a lot of them have the double lock nut there so you don't have to worry about it slipping but anyway that was a nice little let's see what time is it? about three hours on the water caught a couple of bait fish bluegill yellow bass and that one trog of a blue cat anyway hope you like the video thanks for watching hit that like button share and all that helps the channel out it gets the video into the algorithm helps you know other people shouldn't see the videos Yeah. Oh, that is a big swirl. I know what you're thinking. Does this guy ever fish anywhere else? Well, yeah. But when I know the quality of fish are, that is in a spot and the chances of catching fish in that spot, I'm going to fish that spot. Anyway, same thing as the last couple of videos. I just want to catch some bait. Throw some cat rods out. I've got about two and a half, maybe three hours. And we're we'll gonna see what we'll make happen. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda feel like butt today. The pollen is way up there. And I don't know exactly how well this is gonna go because while the water is up a little bit more than it was the last time I was over here. It's kinda wavy. I was kind of trying to dig out a new spot for one of my rod holders. Ooh. I don't know if y'all seen that one or not. But that one double aughted. <laughs> he double aught buckshotted that one. Don't feel bad at all. That's exactly what it is. Big white bass, or not white bass, big yellow bass. That is a stud of a yellow bass. Ooh. It's a stud right there. Straight up to you. There it go. 
Chunky one. Where's my phone at? I need to get a picture from my record book. Well, in case y'all can't tell, we've got like 20, 25 mile per hour gusts. I'm pretty sure you ain't supposed to take a lens cleaner to the eye or breathe it in. Got it. little bitty yellow bass that one will make fine bait I can get easily three three small pieces out of that ow ow you know if I had one of my heavy rods I would not be opposed to throwing you out whole. I ain't used this rod in a long time. This is my Whisker Seeker 7.6 medium heavy spinning rod. I ain't used this dude in forever. And I have caught some of my bigger fish on it. I'm not sure if something on this one or not. It's just acting weird. Yeah, there's one on it. There is one on there. yellow bass and chunky one too i'm wondering if they're any here spawning because oh crap the yellow bass is just gonna have to wait a second we got something serious on here i hope my battery stays good because this one was pulling drag Yep, that's a good one. That is a good blue. I have only got 30 pound braid on here, but I don't know what kind of structure is out there just in that little trough. So I don't want to horse this too much in case it's gotten nicked. This is another big blue. No, don't go around that, don't go around that. I 
He's around that stick. Okay, there we go. And go figure, like I'm, I'm not lying. I was messing with that yellow bass. I was messing with that stinking yellow bass and was about to get my net out. And then I seen this one just yeeting line. Come on. Somebody was asking in my last video, don't you have a fish grips? I was like, yeah, I got them. They just wasn't, they just wasn't in my pocket or in my hand. This is gonna feel good. Gosh. I can't get a good grip on his jaw. There we go. Got your ass now. Well, y'all, I got another hammer. I don't know how much it weighs. I'll take care of that in a minute, but another good one. Let's get a picture real quick and put him back. I'm going to say 21 and three quarter. Because these uh, grips weigh about five ounces. Yeah, you are out of the water for a little bit. There you go. That was nice. Let's do it again. Oh yeah. I got a yellow bass on here. Sorry for keeping you out, Mr. or Mrs. whatever you are, yellow bass. But when what can eat you comes along, they take priority. There's something on there. Probably another yellow bass. You know, I hate fishing in the wind. Nope, it ain't a yellow bass. That's a, uh, that is a hybrid of some sort. No, nope, that's not a hybrid. It's just a bluegill that swallowed it then it's going to get to go back anyway i'm going to just give it about 30 more minutes and then get on out of here i might as well do a night time rig and setup thing here in case you don't know, since I'm reed rigging anyway, uh, Whisker Seeker Triple Threat Circle Hook. Um, I think this is a six aught. I want to use it a snail knot or a knotless knot or no knot, knot, no snail knot, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, this is how you tie it. I use a 50 pound leader in most cases. Um, take your line, go through the front of the hook. And you don't have to do this part, but it's a little extra insurance that I like to do. Simple overhand knot, cinch it down, trim that tag, and then take that tag in, lay it against the back of the hook shank. Three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Wrap it seven to ten times. Decide however much leader you want to have. Usually go a couple inches 
past what you're going to use that way you can account for um, you're not in this case it is going to be a, a clinch knot really I just threw those on the floor or threw those on the ground anyway uh, technically this is still a Carolina rig it's just a fixed Carolina rig just take and tie your main line to a swivel um, and take a snap of some sort not a small one like you can get at Walmart but an actual like a sinker slide type snap or just a big heavy duty one and put it through the main line side of your swivel and that forms a fixed Carolina rig. You can put a peg float on there and make it a Cindy Cooper. Um, but I've also heard of this being called the 100 pounder rig. But it is what it is. But I'm gonna give it about 30 more minutes. I've got a bluegill in the cooler. Oh crap. That is a large fish. That is large. I haven't had a rod double over like that in a long time. That is a big, big fish. He was, I mean, pound and drag. And I don't have my net out and I have a feeling that this one is way too big for it anyway. Oh, that is a big swirl. How did I get down there? Oh. He's not as big as I thought he was, but he's still a good one. And he has pretty much weaved me a sweater. my leader line and all that oh come on dude come on come on Ooh. 
Damn it. Damn, I got him. And he is making a sandwich out of my hand. Twenty-seven, fourteen. Hello, y'all. I was baiting up another rod, fixing to leave, and or not baiting up, but setting up another rod to cast out for about thirty minutes. And one comes along and just annihilates my other rod. This one's bigger than the other one. 27 pounds even. All right, let's get it back. Just got that second one back. Oh, I am soaked. My hand is tore to pieces. Screw it. I ain't gonna stay no more. That made the day. Well, y'all, I'm calling it quits. <laughs> Two big trophy class catfish that close together. My hand is shredded. I'm soaked. Y'all are probably soaked, or at least my GoPro more than likely is. But yeah, that was that was awesome. Um kind of speechless because I normally don't catch two big trophy class catfish like that in the same day but this windy day pre-front conditions because we got some storms coming in tonight not a bad day at all um, I'm gonna go over my gear again real quick before I actually leave and then throw put it all up so that I don't have a mess in my vehicle all right I figure I'll go over the rods again um, that I, I caught those cats on. The one was in the previous video. It's a whisker seeker, seven six medium heavy, uh, one to six ounce, uh, ten to fifty pound mono, two piece rod. You can get it in a one piece rod also. Medium all the way to heavy action. A reel is a Okuma Classic CLX two hundred LA or just a. CLX 200, uh, 30 pound high seas mono. Um, this rod has had some just straight up hogs on it. I'll leave a link in the description to the video below where you can watch Creek Fishing Adventures catch his one of his PBs on it on a uh, video from a couple years ago in the same creek. But this rod here, for some reason, has been a good luck rod for me. Just about every time I've took it out, I've caught fish on it, but it's the same rod as the previous one. It's a seven six medium heavy whisker seeker, two piece rod. The reel is a Cabela's Tournament ZX 4000. It's actually made by Daiwa. And you can kind of see the Daiwa logo there. Pretty good size reel. Um, well, I mean, it's 4,000 size, but I've got it spooled with 30 pound spider wire blue camo braid. And the thing with this spider wire braid, a lot of people hate it because of the castability. And I understand why. When you first get it, it has this coating on it that is just absolute garbage. It's almost like wax. And it's terrible for casting. But um, once you get that coating wore off, this stuff casts like a dream. Like it's nothing to get 60, 70 yards easily with this line i may upgrade it to like 40 pound later on but yeah that's uh the, the rods that put the most work in today cabela's zx 4000 7 6 whisker seeker rods i'll leave a link down in the description for their rods so you can go check them out they've got line hooks um all kinds of like fishing related tools rods they don't have reels but they've got you know clothing and stuff like that a bunch of stuff so Go check that out. And sunglasses. 
it's not my code, but whenever you order from Six Cents Fishing, they send you a little business card with a promotion code or promo code. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description of that in case you want to get you some waterland sunglasses, which are just straight up awesome. I'm not sponsored by them, but I will say that I've had Oakleys, I've had Costas, and a couple other you know nicer brands. These are much better. The glare cutting is just so much better than Oakleys and Costas. They're cheaper. Um, these run about, I think, 119, 120, somewhere around in there. Even cheaper if you use a promo code, I think. But go check out Waterland Sunglasses. They're awesome sunglasses. They're lightweight. They fit very well. And a lot of times, I've just forgot that they even had them on. But anyway, hope y'all like this video. I definitely had fun making it. If y'all think that I didn't have fun making it, then you're wrong. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I did not want to come back out to this spot but the place that i was originally going to fish is completely blown out they logged or bush hogged each side of the road and most of that trash is now in that creek so it's a little bit hard to fish so figured i would come up here to the spot that i've fished a billion times over and see what i can catch i don't even have any real catfish rods with me but i got some that i can you know make it happen with if i had to also, I got some new rod holders that I'm gonna test out, and if there's something big in here, it will test them out. Um, these are the rod holders made by Muddy River Rod Holders. Uh, River Certified on YouTube uses some very, very similar to these, if not identical. Um, they're all welded metal. This is like, I think like 3 8 inch or something like that. Um, you got two different places you can set your rod. You know, you can set it through here and have it out at an angle or just have it standing straight up. Um, they're fairly lightweight and I'll leave a link in the description to the website that I got them at which is trophycattackle.com and the Muddy River Rod Holders Facebook page. Um, I wanted to paint them an, an obnoxious color because I can. I like obnoxious like wild colors so I painted it fluorescent pink. Actually I've got two of them. They're pretty dang stout. Anyway, let's get baited up, see if we can catch a fish. All right, what we're gonna do here is something that I've been trying to do for a while. And back around February, I ordered this little tackle box off of Amazon. And it's a little six compartment box. Hopefully y'all can see this without me spilling everything because I don't want to clean it up again. But you got one for you know bait hooks, swivels, beads, sinkers, like these little bank style sinkers. It'll hold six of the half ounce ones. And then two more for a different size circle hooks, bait hooks, whatever you want to put in there. In this case, this is all like catfish setup. So I've got a couple different sizes of circle hooks. And I'm going to re-rig my rods for that and see if we can catch some decent channel cats or blue cats. Whatever wants to bite on some wire tackle. All right, we bait it up. I've actually had them out for a few minutes now, just up close to the bank because I've seen some stuff splashing up close. But nothing's happened so far. So. I'm going to put these out a little bit farther. I like to take and cut the fins off of my cut bait because the less you have that can interfere with the hookup, the better. All right, half ounce Carolina rig with a small yellow bass head. I'm going to risk a backlash and loosen this sucker up. I believe that will do. I kind of have to be careful because I've only got like 10 or 12 pound line on here. 
which you know is doable with bigger catfish i want to show you something real quick you know you can obviously put your hook through the uh, the, the bait like that or kind of at an angle like that and catch plenty of fish that way but from watching 618 fiction on youtube i've got to where i use his way of hooking cut bait now this hook is a little bit small but it'll work but what you do go in on one side and then come out on the same side it can't rotate and hook into itself that way And something's picked this one up. I bet it's turtle too. Whatever it is, it's on. Hopefully my camera battery don't die either. I'm about guaranteeing this is a turtle. It ain't fighting hardly at all. It's like just pulling in dead weight. Oh no, that is a large catfish. Let this car go on by. I can't quite tell what it is just yet. It's a pretty dang good blue cat. I gotta remember I'm using 10 pound line on here with just a medium action, basically a bass setup. It's a seven foot ugly stick light pro. It's medium action, or well, medium power I should say. Come on, tire out.
actually, I'm gonna save myself the trouble. I've got my grips with me. Instead of getting bit and tore all to pieces. And I'm gonna have to hurry and get out of here pretty soon anyway, cause it's starting to get a little bit dark from this. storm that's coming in. That and I can smell rain in the air. Fortunately, I think it's far enough off that I'll be all right. Come on, come on, come on. Let's bring you right over here. Dude, chill. All right, I got you. Let's get weight on it. I want to say 16, 12. All right, y'all. Really wasn't expecting this one. Good blue cat coming out 16 pounds, seven, no, 16 pounds. Yeah, seven ounces. Uh, I'd have to take five ounces off of the grips, but fought him on light tackle. I'll show you that here in just a little bit, but let's get it back. That was nice. Well, I'm calling it quits because I can smell the rain coming. I'm one of those rednecks. Anyway, the rod that I caught that on is a Shakespeare Ugly Stick Light Pro, seven foot, eight, 20 pound line rating, and just a Abu Garcia Black Max with, I believe that's 10 pound Berkeley Trilene, big game, a little short half ounce Carolina rig with 20 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon and a little four or five aught circle hook. Super light, super comfortable. It forces you to be more patient, forces you to slow down, and it forces you to use the drag. Um, and it makes it a whole lot more fun to catch bigger, nicer fish. Like that one was you know, 16 pounds, seven ounces with the weight of the grippers taken off the scale. Um, it's just, like I said, really fun catching bigger fish on lighter tackle. And, of course, it being ugly stick, everybody knows the quality of ugly stick. They're tough as nails. You just about can't break them. Just about. But, you know, lighter tackle, the older you get, of course, you know, you want something that's going to be easier to handle and doesn't weigh as much. You know, just just makes it more fun. Um the only thing that I've really done to it to make it really more catfishing related is I just added some of this uh, duct tape, glow tape to the end of it. But anyway, you don't need big heavy gear to catch catfish. That right there proves it. It's going to be a, well, obviously a shorter video because the rain's on its way and I don't want to get soaked. 
Springtime catfishing. Let's get at it. Well, I'm here. Just not in the spot that I wanted to be in. Somebody was already there. But I'm down here at the mouth of the creek where it feeds into the Tennessee River. Um, and I'm thoroughly regretting not bringing some lures. Because all I've got is just like worm and cut bait and stuff like that. Because there's a lot of birds flying around right now. Busting on shad. And whatever other bait fish. And I could use some fresh bait. I do have one rod I'm going to use as a bait rod. And then two cat rods. Y'all, I am not going to lie. Um, I love the smell of boat motor exhaust. You know, two stroke, that just gassy, oily smell and exhaust. It smells good. It's just one of those weird smells that I like. I'm getting too old, too fat to be jumping around rocks. Crap like this with all kinds of gear on my back and in my hands and all that. I'm just getting kind of set up. Waiting on Creek Fishing Adventures. And why will you not turn off? There we go. Waiting on Creek Fishing Adventures. He's gonna come down for a couple hours. We got Skipjack on the menu. We got Gizzard Shad, Nightcrawler, and whatever we catch on the Nightcrawler. And for once I actually come prepared, I've got plenty of lighting. My sinker box, I've got like three, four ounce, five ounce, six ounce, and eight ounce, different size or different types. You know, no rolls. Uh, disc sinkers, bank sinkers, stuff like that. But I think with, I think with the flow we're going to be working with right now, I think I'll just start with a four ounce. Should be all right. I want a decent sized fish. I'm sick of catching bait, sick of catching bluegill. To get set up and see if I can catch some fresh bait and save the good stuff for later. All right, I got the one rod out, I'm trying to catch some fresh bait. Just kind of messing around. I ain't put my cat rods out yet because I want to, you know, make it fair for John. I don't want to just blow this place out before he gets here and has a chance to catch one. <laughs> but I fully expect to snag a lot in here. Like over here at the creek mouth, it's usually not too bad, but like right out here, it definitely is. Cause I mean, it's rip a bunch of big rocks there's a big old log down there hopefully something comes along right quick all right we got something on Right. All right. Good looking channel cat. These pants are gonna stink tomorrow. Let's get a picture real quick. Well, didn't have my camera going, but I got this thick red ear that's going to go in the cooler because fresh bait's always better. It'll be all right that my drinks are in there. Little fish slime never hurt anything. Something's on this one. Bait clicker got to come off. Stay on, stay on. This is the 
first good fish that I've caught on this rod, and it's a 7.6 heavy. Just when I was trying to sit down and rest for a second. I've been standing the whole time I was here. See cover. Good flathead. Good flathead. We got it. We got it. This trip wasn't wasted at all. Well, y'all, finally hooked into something decent. Definitely not my biggest one, but it was worth the trip. Let's see if I can get it out of this net. Yeah, he's bleeding a little bit, but it's from where I had him hooked. Good flathead, that's about 15 pounds or so. Getting back. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. I got something on here. Ain't real big, and something's hitting that rod over there. That is a huge bluegill. That is a huge bluegill. And he got that down pretty deep, dang it. I guess. Yeah, I don't know how long I'm gonna be here, so toss that one back. I've got plenty of bait in the cooler as it is. Nice little yellow bass. Now that one swallowed it. I'm gonna have to cut him. If that one right there would just take off and quit pickering with it, I'd be sitting. I'd probably just go ahead and call it a day. But that was that was very worth the trip. I was getting a little bit discouraged. I only caught the little red ear and the one channel cat there at the beginning. And then just got a solid, solid cat, or flat, flathead cat. And on top of that, they're having a football game right over there. So I'm getting to watch football and catch some catfish. That's what it's all about. Well, y'all, I'm calling it quits. Bike got down pretty slow. Turtles started moving in and just pecking the crap out of my baits. Uh, caught a couple bait fish, 
you know, bluegill, yellow bass, red ear, stuff like that. Got the one channel cat, which was not a bad channel cat by any means. That was about a five or six pounder, which is good for me. Good for who's catching it. And got the one flathead, which I wish I had weighed, but I didn't. You know, adrenaline starts kicking in. You just don't think about stuff like that. But I think that one's pretty safe to say that one's around 12 to 15 pounds. But anyway, it was not a bad evening out here on the Tennessee River. Like Chickamauga Dam's just right up the river right there. And there's a football game going over there. So I kind of got to watch football while I was catfishing. But anyway, another view of the river here. I will definitely, definitely be back down here. <sighs> Y'all, this is an eight foot heavy rod and it is a broom handle. Well, good afternoon, evening, whatever it is, YouTube. Uh, take my little wagon for a walk. <laughs> Actually, we're taking our little wagons for a walk uh, down here with Crazy Catfish and on the Tennessee River. I'm gonna spend a few hours, see if we can at least get some bait caught. We do have some chicken liver and eye crawlers and all that. But we're gonna sit it out here tonight at the creek mouth and see if we can catch some flatheads, blues, whatever. Cause this is probably gonna be one of my last night fishing trips of 2022. We'll see you when we get down to the water. You know, as fishermen, there's only one smell that could get a fisherman all riled up more than anything. And is that fresh, nasty old river water got that old fishy smell to it and we're like right there from all right everybody this here's our home for the evening I'm going right down yonder where he's at to set up all our cat rods um there's definitely a lot of bait moving around in here right now we've seen skip jack shad and all kinds of stuff jumping along this shoreline just working its way down but i try to catch some fresh cut bait throw out some live bait and give her a good heave ho. I just threw one right on top of it. Oh, Got it. There we go. Double up. Double dub, baby. Woo, this is a good one. The hook couldn't come out. This won't come out. There we go. Jeez. Well, hello, y'all. How's y'all doing? I hope anybody's in here watching. And I hope you're having a good time. I sure am. Got it. Got it. Got it. We ain't going to have to worry about bait tonight, that's for sure. Well, no, we ain't. That's a scrappy little yellow bass. You got a yellow one? Get them worms and set them up here so I don't have worms running all over my cooler. Whoa! Watch out flying fish around here, man. Oh, that's a three quarter ounce flying spoon. <laughs> Got you. I snagged you. But you'll make fine bait. Most of these little yellow bass or white bass that we're catching ain't real big, but it don't take a real big chunk of bait to catch a big fish. Got it. This one feels a little bit nicer. That's cause it is. That's See what you do, man? <laughs> 
right at the bank. Hey, um, David, how you doing, buddy? Almost got your name. White bass number five for me. All right, we're going to lay that camera down because I feel like I'm about to hit it. All right, maybe y'all can see a little bit better. And maybe this one ain't snagged all to hell. Probably is. Well, y'all, I'm going a little bit bougie tonight. I've got my my ring light set up here. Make it a little bit easier to do you know, recordings or catches or updates, stuff like that. Which... I guess I could go ahead and include a little update. We caught the snot out of white bass, so we've got plenty of bait. We still got some night crawlers, chicken livers, stuff like that. I've got one live white bass casted out this way, and then two uh, body chunks casted straight out in front. And hopefully the current dies down pretty soon, which it should have by now, because when we got here, it's flowing about 42,000, and it's supposed to get down to, a bank, I think, about 20,000, give or take tonight so we're gonna fish well into the night and see what we can catch had to bring out my battery pack with the adapter up to my ring light which it's not on right now but this one right here sure is saving my legs because we got a lot of mosquitoes out but this rod over here i got a live white bass out this one here and this one here got body chunks over here oh Open your mouth. <laughs> you go. There you go. I didn't even get him in the mouth either. <laughs> no. See if you get to get that out of your pliers. Well y'all. First a good cat of the night. About 10 pound blue on cut white bass. Gonna get it back out there and do it again. Well, that was fun. It's been a hot minute since I've actually had to fight something with some size to it. Might as well go ahead and check my other rod. This other one over here with a live white bass on it, it's still kicking. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my other one in and just rebate both of them. And hopefully repeat that little process. This is a big fish. This is a big fish. Hit that. Uh, ring line. 
It's on the back of the thing where the camera is, just hits a little knob. Gah. Yeah, this is a big old fish. <laughs> no, that's not on right now. He's under this rod right too. Yeah, this is a big one. I, he burnt my thumb pulling drag. <sighs> Y'all, this is an eight foot heavy rod and it is a broom handle. And he is just whooping my. Oh, it's a, not as big as I thought, but he is a hammer. We got him. This big bastard. Come to 30 pounds, I'll get away to the net and subtract that. But let's get it back. Back to the death where them big ones belong. Hey, you know what? I've been needing that fish bad. The last few times I've been out fishing for anything, I'm barely able to catch a bluegill. And that one came on a live white bass. It was about seven inches long. So, we're gonna give it, Tom, you need to head out. I don't have to be home until five o'clock. Uh, well, we're gonna give it a couple more hours and see if we can make it happen again because you just never know let's weigh the net get one and a half pound well one and a quarter off so comes to about 29 pounds even all right we're rebated this was about a seven inch seven or eight inch white bass i just cut the tail off to have a, a bigger bait and doing it like this with smaller baits makes you have a little bit bigger bait and it makes that bait or that blood drip out of them a lot slower make it last longer out on the water Got that one. Hell, he's probably shitting this one out by the time I <laughs> I reel or set the hook. I let him run with it for a minute.
Um, I don't know if that one's in that leather line or. So something just. Hey, we got the trifecta. Yep. Got a flat head. I should be good there. All right, we got the trifecta. Pretty flat head, probably go 8, 10 pounds. Barely had that one hooked, but he's got a gnarly tooth patch that's digging into my thumb, so we're gonna get it back. <laughs> Whoo! As if my shoes wasn't already soaked. <laughs> And he shit all over my hand. I mean, almost like I was trying to give that cat a colonoscopy with my finger. Oh, I don't know about Dieter. Well, y'all, it is currently 2:23 a.m. And I still got a bunch of crap to haul back up to our little wagons. But this was a good night on the water. Started out kind of slow. Definitely had some lulls in there. But catching a good mess of white bass and yellow bass there at the beginning to, you know, just get the skunk out and get some bait ready for the rest of the night. Hey, that made it up, or made it up for it. But we definitely had some lulls, some slow times. But catching the trifecta, you know, channel cats, blues and flatheads, definitely worth it. Anyway, I'm not gonna include what I recorded of him catching fish. I just tried to not do that. So whenever he gets his video up, just go check it out on his channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Sometimes you wake up, head to the water, thinking you're gonna catch a mess of crappie. But fact of the matter is, something else has bigger plans. And that is exactly what happened today. Well, good morning, YouTube. Check out this view real quick. We're here on the back side of Chickamauga Dam, meeting up with Chat Cats Fishing. And so we're gonna find a deep hole somewhere here on the lake and hopefully, fingers crossed, pro, or hopefully catch a big old catfish. So we're gonna get down here, get loaded up and get on the water. He just got his boat back and wanna do just a little shakedown to make sure everything's good and ready to go before he starts guiding again in March. But, yeah, we're going to try to drag out some big monsters because there's some there's some straight up hogs in this lake my biggest came out of this i'm gonna say where but this one right here my biggest catfish ever and it came out of this spot and we've got plenty plenty of big baits and plenty to catch more big baits with so this should be fun is freaking massive i'm starting to think i should, probably should have put a tin all on oh, well i'll give you a reason to wash those pants tonight <laughs> uh, i think i'm on the bottom there somewhere reeled up a couple of turns If they want it bad enough, they'll come up. Got good current though on the lake. Oh yeah. Anchor spot lock. 
or it was. Now come back for it. Of course, we're using, using baits the size of a small house. <laughs> we have a really ambitious channel cats right now. <laughs> You want this one? Uh, you already got to go ahead. No, I don't think so. This one over here is just trying to find the hook, I think. We're going to go ahead and get the video started. I think that one on that rod over here gave up because it didn't hit it in a minute. Yeah. Oh. Oh shit. Doubled up. <laughs> This one feels nice. Feels good. Of course, I've caught nothing but bluegill and crappie for the last three months. This one ain't got a lot of head shakes. Feels pretty good. pretty good. Not a lot of head shakes, so it's either a big one or a flathead. It's a good, nice blue. Not a bad one. Probably just get the right way, honestly. He's probably. Let me step down. Get some line out. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good fish, right? Yeah. They'll probably go what, 25 maybe. Considering everything that I have caught here recently has been bait. <laughs> Picture of me with it. Yeah. Let me use your phone. Yeah. I'll do. If you can just make it, kind of, yeah, like that. Right. What would you say, five pounds? Something yeah, like that? five to eight, something like that. He's got a gut full too. I'll weigh him for you. I'm, yeah, he's got to be. He can't go twenty-five. Yeah, that came on the regular demon dragon. I've got a handful of demon dragons. I'll use every so often, but I lose them more than I actually get to keep them. Right. What's your guess? I'm going to say, I'm going to say 22, just to be kind of in the middle. Twenty-four point seven. Yep, twenty-four point seven four. We wasn't far off. That's a saw twenty-four pounder, though. That was fun, considering. <laughs> All right, now. 
There we go. Good job. Back to the depths he goes. Oh, nice decompression right there. Yeah, back where you go, or needs to be. It's funny how they were all getting hit, like that one was getting hit, and then... Yeah, it was doing rods. But yeah, this right here is kind of a little eddy because that little wall over there. Somebody had a limb line over there. There's a chunk of rope hanging. Oh, damn. All right. Land right in, right in the mouth of, oh, 55, 60, something on a light end. All right, I'll just hit the bottom right there. I mean, we're in 47, 48 feet. It's not bad, is it? Yeah, fix the bathroom. We'll replace the battery, so I might as well grab one. Yeah, that looks like a flathead bite to me, because it's just so soft it's not as jittery as like a blue cat bite it's still on yeah. want me to get it or? yeah go ahead you already got hands on it and he ain't fighting very hard is he Take it. <laughs> Small little guy. That head piece, though. Yeah, it took a little work, but he got it. He's got a pudge on him, that's for sure. Fuck, like he's that's a eight pound body, but he's got a twelve pound gut on him. <laughs> Fish number three. Been pretty slow, guys. I just I don't know. Bluebird skies day, making it really tough. All right, y'all. It's been a really really slow day. We've caught fish, but we're at what our fifth spot. I think we're like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> But we're not messing around. We're using big baits. Like, this is a baseball chunk of red ear, which I can't get over the size of that thing. Now I'm just spin drifting with mine. And I gotta change the battery out here in just a minute. Yeah, he's just messing with it because that's a really big piece of bait. And he's still peckering with it. That's got to be a small fish. Yeah. I wonder if he's swimming. He has to have it. I just don't want to. He's swimming up river with it. I think he's on there. I don't know. Yep. He's on. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Yeah, I've got all these shiny new catfish rods and 
ain't, ain't any of beat up. Yeah, this inside rod here is getting This is a good fish. Not everything, yeah, not everything from China is junk. <laughs> Most of it is. This is a good yeah. fish. He is just sitting there. This is a good fish. Forty. Your middle rod right over there just got hit again too. Well, this one I think is more. That's too much. <laughs> God, this is a good fish. Jeez. This is straight down, like I don't think it's tangled with that one. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> It's definitely over 20 the way this thing's fighting. Oh yeah. Damn. <laughs> it's not fighting like a blue though. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can probably tighten up a little more than that. I mean, Ford is pretty strong. I go a little more. That's good. That's good. Okay. So what I like about the Whisker Seeker Mono is 40 pound and it is about the same diameter as 30, 35 pound trialing. We literally waited all day for this. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a big flat. I will take a big flat. It wouldn't take but 24 pounds to cheese. A little bit. That my back is sore. <laughs> yes. Finally found some warm water. This one been biting at it for a minute. Yeah, just upstream from it. Yeah. This hit a big shell cracker head. And we got a daddy tank. <laughs> God. Big head shake. That it is, of course. I'm a guy that catches boogie on crappie for fun. I rarely ever have to fight something. <laughs> I think it came loose because it's going pretty much straight down now. I mean, it may still be. Jeez. 
please. Uh, I didn't want to have to do this, but... <laughs> Well, it's dwarfing that 23 from this morning or 24 from this morning. Oh, well, it's a medium rod, but it's still, that's a lot. It's, I mean, he's took drag several times. be close he, yeah, he's taking track <laughs> well we'll give it one click Away from the boat. Yo, yes. <laughs> I'm going to feel that one for a couple of days. middle right over there just got hit again <laughs> we'll, job, deal. Dude. we'll deal with that one in a second that's a toad oh, chris we had to work for that brother didn't we hey that's a hug fish <laughs> good job on your new pb I, we'll, we'll see well we'll it's going to be very very damn close yeah. it is going to be very damn close we had to work for that one didn't we all day man every time i'm on this guy's boat I catch some good fish. Well, it's been a struggle, but it's we, a struggle bus, we, but we made it work so. every single time. All right. Why did it happen on your rod, dude? That's just too constant for you, seriously. I like my Mad Cat rods, but I would have much more liked the uh, bigger handles on the uh, sure. 
battle cats. <laughs> Y'all were dealing with this monster that I just reeled in, and I'm I'm confident it's going to rival my PB Blue Cat of 52. And while we're dealing with it, he had another one take down. This is my fish for the headpiece that we just. Uh... Yeah, considering we're throwing out cannonballs. <laughs> I told you, man, it just takes one fish to kind of change the tide, you know? So that's, we're, what, five fish now? Yeah, now I'm actually starting to pick up, so. Here's mine, guys. Not, nothing like Chris's, but uh, still a good one. Okay. Yeah, I, I do like my mad cats, but those thicker front grips on the battle cats would have been much more much more comfortable because that would have allowed for less right. hand fatigue Man, this is a big ass fish. It's 65 64 we're going to say 65, 65. well count of the count net, the net too. 63 yeah that's your new pb though dude Dude, look at that, guys. I'm going to get a picture real quick. Just sit tight. Sixty-three pounds, guys. Sixty-three. Jesus. Fifty inches. All right, let's All get right. this thing back. <laughs> All right, tail first. You know the drill. All right. We may have to give her time just because... Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you think she's ready... Whoa! Yeah, she gone. Keep going, girl. Keep going. Back to the depths, dude. Damn. Nice, Chris. <laughs> what do you think about that? I'm gonna feel that one for a couple of days. <laughs> Whew. Beat my PB by 11 pounds. Yeah. It yeah. did hit. The scale did hit 70 a couple of times, but it was bouncing around, so yeah so yeah because i mean it was really hard for me to lift i haven't had a fish that we're both big in the boat. we're both short so <laughs> that didn't help <laughs> good job man proud of you hell yeah this guy right here is what really got me stuck into catfishing so we had to work for that one today yeah so that definitely definitely get on the youtubes and check out check cats fishing he's got a couple of i actually got a lot of damn monsters on your channel several over 90 one almost 100 what was it like 97 yeah some big damn fish who better than i thought i thought he was going to be like an upper 50s but he just had more girth and i thought well, that could be all right y'all he's hooked up with another one my camera wasn't hooked up so i just passed the rod back off to him because originally he hooked it and then handed it to me and i didn't have my camera on and <laughs> but we got another good one I guess I need to be the net man now. Oh, shit, what am I hung on cleat? Alright, got that one, huh? Uh something's tangled up in there because there's another one there. Yeah. Hey, I can catch them and net them. How about that? It's a good fish. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, that's a good solid fish. That one's probably 20. That's yeah. about the same size as the first one we caught today. Fish number six, guys. I don't know if he's still on or not, but... Dang it. Oh, crap. Oh, that fish? Yeah. Fish? <laughs> that one hadn't been in the water <laughs> or back in the water two minutes yet i don't think he's really big he's just fired up but then again i could be wrong Look at this. We got a fish on this one. jeez y'all he's fighting one i'm fighting one that rod's getting bit i think we found the spot we should have stayed at to begin with <laughs> no did that come off damn it 
Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he was. He wouldn't let me. Uh. Pretty good fish. <laughs> I couldn't uh, tighten the, or turn the handle. He was pulling. Chris is hooked up. Hey. Yeah, this one ain't big. He's just. He's just spunky. That's what I like about blue cats is they just grab it and go. Well, they don't sit around and munch on it for five minutes like a like a flathead does. Right. And the middle take down on that middle one or outside one. Inside one or whatever it is. <laughs> I'm all discombobulated. Did it come off? Dang it. All right. Good healthy catfish. We've been catching several about this size today. That's the fun size ones. Oh, well. That's the fun size ones as kayak catfish says. Looks like another fun size one. I ain't gonna worry about it. He's already got supper fixed anyway. <laughs> or is working on it one. If I was, yeah, if I mean, if I was a client and that was the size that we were catching pretty much all day, I would be happy with that. Hell yeah. Because, you know, those teener size ones they put up a good fight there's usually a lot more of those than 60 or 50 60s and all that and i mean that's not a bad eater size if somebody wanted to take home with them. Yeah. fun size ones yeah. that's a good light tackle size catfish too Well, dang it, y'all. That was a rather slow starting day, but right there at the end, right behind the dam, it really, really picked up. But I think I ended up with three fish, one around 22, no, 24, the 63, and then the smaller one here behind the dam. And I don't know how many he caught, we, but we lost a lot of fish. But it was a good day. Definitely check out Check Heads Fishing on YouTube, Instagram, and his Facebook page. All of that will be linked below in the description. Also check out the top link in my description, which is my mule fishing affiliate link, even though we didn't use any of those baits in today's video. Anyway, it has got cold. I've got about an hour or so drive back home in traffic. <laughs> Hope you like the video. Again, check out Check Heads Fishing on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.